managing, configuring, and provisioning your devices over the air when it comes to IoT applications is critical. Uh, you have to have security, you have to have the management, you have to have the monitoring of all of the operations. Uh, it happens so that Azure IoT Hub has a feature that is called the Automatic Device Management. And I have uh, Arthur Ma from the DevDiv team in China here with me to demo an over-the-air firmware update on the the MX chip dev kit that we have here, uh, everything is going to happen live. It's going to show us how easy it is to configure a deployment of a new firmware at scale onto IoT devices. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we are talking about over-the-air update and a fantastic demo that Arthur is here to show us. Arthur, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. And, uh, thank you for having me here. Of course, hopefully it's not going to be the last time. Mm -hmm. um, can you please, for our audience, introduce yourself real quick and what your team is doing at Microsoft? Yeah, uh, so uh, I'm the uh, dev manager from Visual Studio China team, and then we are in Shanghai, and then we are working on the IoT toolings. So last time, my colleague Leah and Xin, they have already introduced several products of uh, our team built for the Edge IoT development, including yeah. the IoT Toolkit extension, IoT Edge extension, IoT Workbench extension and uh, the MX Chip IoT Dev Kit. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So here today we are. We have a new feature in IoT Hub in Azure IoT Hub, which is yeah. about automatic device management. Yeah. Um, we've been having actually a couple of shows on that. We've yeah. been describing the feature and so on. But I think it's it's great you're coming today because you have a new sample on yeah. the library on the catalog of, of samples for the MX Chip uh, yeah. Dev Kit yeah. that it, that shows and that provides the code and and demonstrate how you actually implement over the air update of a full firmware yeah. for a microcontroller, right? Yeah. yeah, right, right. So so for OT I think it is very important for any IoT scenario because you know you, you can imagine people have bunch of device mm -hmm. has been uh, distributed all over the world, uh, maybe hundreds, thousands, or even millions. Yep. So if they find a critical bug, want to fix it, I cannot imagine if we don't have OTA people how to do it. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. I actually have a fantastic anecdote with that. Yeah. Um, in my previous life, yeah. I was working on various projects, and yeah. I was hearing that story about this company that is distributing um, gas for cars, right, okay. in, in stations. And yeah. uh, what happened is that they had these uh, pump, these fuel pumps are yeah. actually powered by some software. There's a nice crane, displays mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. I will not say any names. Uh, <laughs> but what happened is that the, the machine switched to daylight saving time yeah. automatically yeah. because the OS used actually does that. And then suddenly there was a pop-up that expected a user to click OK to validate, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what happened is that these kiosks, these pump didn't mm -hmm. have any input, no touch screen, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't have any over-the-air management or control or update capabilities for these devices. So they had oh. to send someone to oh. manually plug in a USB keyboard on every single of these fuel pumps yeah. to hit OK. okay. <laughs> and so if they had something like that, yeah. they would totally actually be able to update the configuration, to mm -hmm. update the firmwares, the applications mm -hmm. remotely. Yes. And we'll see that in a minute, right? So that, yeah. like... Fantastic anecdote about yeah. what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, right. So yeah, so basically what I would like for you to do right now is jump into the catalog of the samples, show yeah. what people can find that information about the MX chip dev kit sample for yeah. doing over the update of the firmware. Sure. So we have the home page. This is the home page of our dev kit. Yeah. So we add uh, the new uh, samples in the uh, project catalog. Yep. Well, so when we switch to the catalog, the first one is just the OAT updates examples. Okay. And uh, in another way, if you install the VS Code, uh, the IoT Workbench extension, so the IoT uh, Workbench example page also shows the example awesome. here. Yeah. Okay. You can just uh, click here the tutorial, the tutorial, just uh, jump to our tutorial directory. Okay. So currently, the tutorial is on the GitHub. Uh, mm -hmm. We are plan to move to docs.microsoft.com. Okay, yeah. awesome. So yeah. having the tutorial actually allows anyone to mm. do the exact same thing. Yeah. Today, people know how to do firmware update on that one because we provide updates regularly for that board. Yeah. So it's a drag and drop, yeah. which is right. already super simple. Yeah, right? very simple. You, you can just uh, uh, download the firmware from our website yeah. or you can build it by yourself and drag yeah. a job to this 
uh, dev key. To the dev yeah. key directly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but as you were mentioning, this, and we, we talked about an anecdote about that, but this doesn't scale, right? You yeah. cannot go to every single device, in, especially once they are in production, yeah. and go develop or deploy that definitely, in the firmware, right? Definitely. So how does that work? Can you show us a little bit how that sample works and do us a demo of that? Okay. So, f so first, uh, I, I can just uh, show uh, the high-level architecture of mm -hmm. how we work for okay. this uh, uh, out here from web update. So here is a dev kit, and here is IoT Hub. By leveraging the IoT Hub automatic device management, okay. we can just uh, define a, a firmware update uh, design property, mm -hmm. and the uh, automatic device management will distribute this information to all the devices. Uh, and uh, then when the IoT dev kit, here's the IoT dev kit, yeah. uh, when it connected to the IoT hub, mm -hmm. uh, the dev kit will get the phone, phoneware information uh, yeah. compared with the local version mm -hmm. and uh, decide if we, uh, the dev kit need to upgrade the phoneware. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and you're yeah. saying all the devices, but actually the, the automatic device management feature allows you to decide which devices yeah, right, right, you right, want right. to target, right? Yeah. So basically yeah. if you have a set of devices you want to try the firmware update on yeah. before going to production yeah. you know, at scale, yeah. you will do that in that small you know, batch of devices, yeah. see everything is fine, and then decide how you will continue your deployment of your update, right? Right, right. You can tag the different uh, like uh, uh, batch of the uh, devices. Uh, you can operate okay. maybe the batch one or next batch two. Okay. Right, right. And so you were mentioning, so that's the functionality of IoT Hub, but you yeah. were also mentioning that the device itself yeah. will, will actually report its actual firmware version, will detect the desired firmware right. version. Yeah. There needs to be a logic on the device that mm -hmm. needs to be developed by someone, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, so here uh, for IoT Dev Kit, it's uh, just uh, like a constrained device. It's had a limited resource. Okay. So we have the build some uh, a new APIs upon the CSDK, IoT okay. Hub CSDK. Okay. Uh, just to retrieve the information from the desired property, mm -hmm. and uh, when we get the information, we can report uh, the status uh, through the uh, by using the IoT uh, device twins. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you provide a piece of code that actually implements yeah. that firmware update on the yeah. device side of things. Yeah. And it's something that uh, is important to understand, which is uh, we have IoT Hub, which gives the plumbing to implement device management automatically. But yeah. you have to, to configure that on yeah, the back right, end. Right. And you have to have the code that supports that on the device developed. Right, right, right. Definitely. Okay. And I guess so you guys having everything on open source on GitHub actually right. help customers reproduce that yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah. This okay. example just on as you said in yeah. GitHub, everyone can grab the code for, uh, by try this example. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can uh, reference this uh, code to build their own solutions okay. on product. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Well, so, let's do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so. Uh, if we, we open the IoT Workbench uh, example category, yeah. we just uh, click this open examples, mm -hmm. and then we can here we can uh, create a new examples, maybe the name, uh, just for OTA. Yeah. Uh, China Line. Okay, then it just download the the code from GitHub automatically. Okay. Oh, so I get the wrong example. All right, let's, uh, uh, let's open the, the OTA example. Yeah. yeah, here is the OTA example. Okay. So here you can see all the code. Uh, it's uh, Arduino code. Mm -hmm. So as, a, as usual, we just uh, have the IoT dev kit connected with mm -hmm. my computer. Okay. And uh, then, uh, then we can first step is just to configure the, the cloud side. Okay. We need to find the uh, one IoT hub okay. use for this demo. Mm -hmm. So the cloud uh, provisioning. Okay. Uh, se select my subscription, and this is the uh, uh, resource group. Okay. And the dev kit. To save the time, I just uh, use the exist one. Okay. Yeah. This is interesting. This is um, actually in the IoT Workbench extension. You have yeah. a set of, of templates, right? Yeah. And then you're leveraging that, and then you have a set of, of samples. And all of that together allows you to have this uh, this flow mm -hmm. of yeah. deploying from VS Code a set of resources in the cloud that you're yeah. going to use for your application. Yeah, right. That's pretty neat. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So okay. next, uh, I just uh, create a new device okay. for this demo. Uh, it's AZ31666. Uh, hyphen two. Okay. 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 
provisioning succeed. So I need to uh, configure this uh, connect string to the okay. device. So switch the dev kit to configuration mode and uh, use the command device setting and configure the connect string. Okay, so basically provisioning the connection string to the yeah. device for yeah. it to be able to connect to IoT Hub. Yeah, right, right. Okay, right. got it. Okay, it's done. So we can just uh, build this is new code and upload it to the device. Okay. Yeah. So, so that piece of code is one is running yeah. that uh, will report the actual firmware version yeah. through the uh, through the twin and then uh, will read the desired version for the twin and yeah. do something about it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So the code is actually compiled. It's been pushed to the device, right? Yeah. And it's been refreshing the device. Device rebooted. Yeah, you can see the version. And the version of the firmware says is a 1 .0. firmware 1.0.0. Zero zero. Yeah. Right. right. So, um, get, if you guys see it, but I can vouch for Arthur. He's not lying. It's 1.0.0 zero zero here. <laughs> awesome. So that's the actual firmware that is on that device, right? Yeah. So let's see what happens. Uh, how do you update so that firmware? So, uh, so next, I just uh, want to build a new firmware. Okay. Uh, so for this demo, I just uh, change the version of the this it. firmware. Okay. Yeah. I increase one. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, build the new firmware. Yeah. Okay. So here we're back into the round of, of building that firmware. Yeah. Right? It's a new firmware. And, uh, and then uh, the device will uh, will actually uh, well actually you're gonna have to set up the IT hub after, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we can do that while it's building, right? You can actually go to the IT hub and do the setup down there. Uh, but I, I still need the like the CRC value of the new firmware, no, so I still okay. need to okay. wait. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, let's wait for it to build then. Okay. 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 Uh, finish build the new firmware. Okay. So here, uh, for OTA. So uh, you didn't deploy the firmware. You just built the binary. Yeah, it's the ready bin to go. Yeah. That's this new version. So the device is still running one zero zero here. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to do the next steps. Yeah, okay. next steps. So uh, to ensure uh, our like a firmware update is secure, yeah. so we need to get uh, the CRC value of this new firmware, even the file size okay. for, for the firmware update. Got so it. So it's a way for verifying from the device side that what you're downloading is actually yeah. what you were told to download, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. And then we also have a building uh, command to calculate the okay. CRC value. OK. Here is the, so this is a firmware file. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a CRC value or already Got it. Okay. Oh. So that's one way of doing it, right? But yeah. I guess that's because the logic we're implementing in the way we're doing firmware updating that sample mm -hmm. is using that. But yeah. if, if a customer actually has another way to mm -hmm. validate a firmware, mm -hmm. you know, they can actually implement that yeah. logic of theirs. Yeah, right? Right, right, okay. Right. Okay, so let's go back to the Azure portal. Yeah. So here, uh, this is our hub we use for this OTA. Uh, demo. Okay. So uh, go go to the IoT device configuration. Okay. Uh, I just want to add a new configuration for the firmware up, up, okay. uh, upload. Okay. Makes sense. So here. Okay. Uh, I can tap, uh, give a name just for for example, it's a firmware one hundred one. Okay. And. Uh, Okay, uh, this uh, device twin pass we want to use for the firmware update. Okay. So it's a desired property. Uh, I okay. just uh, copy from here. And okay. the property is here. For firmware update, we have four property. The first one is the version. Okay. Next is the, the UI of the new firmware, and okay. then the CRC value, and the file size. So next step, I just uh, want to upload my new firmware to the Azure Blob okay. storage. OK. You, yeah. you get ready for the device to download the yeah, yeah, device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it. right, right. So uh, here, I just upload a new firmware. OK. So that's the binary file that you would actually drag and drop to the device to, yeah. to update the firmware manually if you wanted right, to on the device. Right, right, right. So and you're using the Azure Blobs, but you could use anything that would yeah, be accessible right. from the device. Yeah. Uh, once again, you like security, so we really want to nail things down in terms of locking how devices get the binary, yeah. download, verify it, it is the right thing, yeah. and, and then uh, flash to the device. Right, right. Makes right. sense. Makes sense. OK, upload. OK.
Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, so there's a new firmware here. So this one is ready for devices not to download. Yeah. Oh, got it. So I copy the, the URL. Okay. So here I can replace this URL with a new one. Okay. And I also have the, the checksum, CSE checksum. Okay, because it might have changed. Yeah. Oh, it's the same. It's the same, in the same size. Okay. okay, same size. Okay, this is a property we have, and I just uh, mm -hmm. upload it to Do the configuration itself. Yeah. Okay. So the configuration basically is the, the, the device management configuration is basically about saying, hey, oh, you're going to target which devices, but you're going to say basically, here is the desired state I want yeah. you to be in. Yeah. Correct? Right, okay. right. So next step. Uh, we can define some custom uh, metrics to monitor the state of the firmware update. Okay. So here, uh, I just want to maybe add uh, three metrics. Okay. So first uh, is the uh, current state. Okay. That means uh, which version of this uh, firmware are running on this device. Okay. So we name it current. And uh, we also I also want to know uh, the error message. It's if it's if fair. It's <laughs> uh, totally. <laughs> fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Which the device, the code running on the device will actually put in the twin yeah. for the back end to be informed of what happened. Got yeah. it. So it's a reported state basically. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, maybe I also want to know the downloading status. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, downloading. Okay. okay. Same so matrix. And the next step is uh, like the priority. Okay. Uh, I just put a one. Okay. Uh, just uh, as you said, uh, maybe we can target uh, some di uh, different batch of this device. Mm -hmm. But uh, yep. for this demo, I can target to all the devices. Okay. So, yeah. All the devices so will be targeted. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. But you can, yeah. And you can go to like this with, with one. Yeah. But then it's going to be as many of you have yeah. are connected to IT Hub. Yeah, right. And actually the scaling is taken care of by the combination of IT Hub, yeah. Azure Storage is going to provide the download bits yeah. and yeah. things like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just uh, submit. Okay. So a new configuration. Okay. As ADM will apply this uh, device twin to all the devices. Okay. Yeah. So we can check this. So the device oh. is actually already yeah, it's just uh, getting the information. It's, it's downloading now. Okay. Uh, okay. So after just a dev kit, get the new firmware information yeah. and uh, download the new firmware from the Azure Brava. Yes. And after the boot, uh, it will apply the new firmware. So yes. now the, the dev kit just uh, rebooted okay. and apply the new firmware. You can see the, the new version of this firmware. Okay. So it'll be on the, on the twin and then you also have it on yeah. the device itself, you can see the firmware version is switched to 101. Yeah. Yeah. And on the device twin, if you look at your screen, yeah, we can now see we can the, see the, yeah. the device twin reported as you know the new version, right? Yeah. So when we go go to the uh, firmware information, you can mm -hmm. see the firmware version is now 1.0. Uh, okay. uh, 1.0. 101. One 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah. And actually, the beauty of it is we didn't touch the device. Yeah. yeah Everything happened through IoT Hub, configuration yeah. through the, the, the automatic device yeah. management. Right, right, awesome. Right. Yeah. That's a neat demo that actually you guys can reproduce pretty easily because yeah. uh, if you have an MX chip device, yeah. uh, you can just go on the portal, as Arthur just showed, and reproduce that over the air firmware update of yeah. a microcontroller through Azure IoT Hub. Right, right. Cool. Well, I hope to see you again for other nice demos of sure, all the tooling sure. your team is putting together. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching the IT Show, and don't forget to subscribe.